some more crazy for you. Crazy, crazy time we are living. You know, there are so many people who are hypocrites. It is phenomenal. Major papers urge Trump to kill Syrians, risk World War III to stop their animal, Assad, from killing his own citizens. That murderous dictator, just like they claimed Gaddafi was. Oh, wow. And you know what? There are so many Americans who are right along with this. Western governments accuse the Syrian government of carrying out a chemical weapon attack in Duma's suburb of Damascus. The World Health Organization says that of 70 deceased persons they examined in the area, 43 had signs of being exposed to highly toxic chemicals, though whether the government carried out the attack has not been confirmed. But clearly, that doesn't matter. It does not matter to mainstream media reporters. It is, I, I just saw an article that um, an organization that investigates chemical attacks, they're on their way to Syria. I also posted a video. And doctors in Duma are saying, hey, we haven't uh, seen any patients with any symptoms that come close to a chemical attack. All right. Well, we know lying is the way of the world. Lie. You have an agenda? Lie. That's how people get their objectives. That, that's how they become successful. That's how they pursue their agendas. Lie. I'm so, so sick of it. So unbelievably sick of it. But read this article. It is really amazing to see how many you know, people are publishing in mainstream media, the New York Times, Washington Post, national interest. All right. What are they calling for? <laughs> yeah, saying that Trump should follow through on his tough talk is a way of saying that he should carry out his threats against Syria and its allies. In the bizarro world, where the paper evidently operates, it's not dropping bombs that is dangerous, even though the bombs are presumably unsafe for the Syrians beneath them. What the hell have we become here? We've always been uh, just these uh, is it because people are bored and they just need that kind of excitement as long as the bombs are not hurting them they call for bombing other countries do you get that okay we've got th this is the narrative there's a humanitarian crisis in Syria their crazy animal murderous dictator is killing his own Syrians. So we've got to go in and save those Syrians by bombing Syria. Really? Ron Paul came out and said, it is utterly ridiculous to think that Assad, and he has said that with every chemical attack, you can't quote me on that, but I remember him coming out, the last chemical attack, it was like, come on, and come on, Americans, Jesus, it's so obvious now. It is so obvious, and most Americans just walk around believing horseshit over and over and over again. And if it wasn't dangerous, if it wasn't hurting people, if so many people around the world did not have to suffer the consequences of our evil, I wouldn't be upset. But it is very upsetting. So this editorial in the New York Times opened by saying that the world had, quote unquote, grown numb to the slaughter of civilians in Syria until it saw pictures from Duma. The cognitive dissonance is astounding. The paper notes the emotional potency of pictures of dead and wounded Syrians while saying that the U.S. should ratchet up the war in Syria, a move that is guaranteed as we know from the results of U.S. attacks on Iraq, 
Libya, and Syria itself to produce victims who are just as dead and injured as the ones in the photos described. You know, Trump says we're getting out of Syria, and that's when Assad decides to launch another chemical attack. The, you know, the timing of, of what is taking place here, it, I, I believe that they do these things because they want to highlight how unbelievably stupid are Americans. And they're laughing at Americans for believing the crap that they tell them. Why would Assad launch another chemical weapons attack on his own civilians when Trump has said we're coming, we're getting out of Syria? That would bring us more. Do we really think that Assad is just an idiot? No, I don't. Uh, hey, Western educated is Assad. A doctor. Oh. Yeah, the response must be military. The Guardian. Article by Simon Tisdall, who is a known journalist, and he's a warmongering idiot. The article suffers from the same affliction. He demands Western military action and explains that this, this is that guy. Look at this guy. And we actually, we have the, we have the audacity, the uh, incomprehensible gall to claim that somebody else is evil. Yeah, sorry for the car outside, but he demands Western military action and explains that this recommendation means destroying Assad's combat planes, bombers, helicopters, and ground facilities for the air, from the air. It means challenging Assad's and Russia's control of Syrian airspace. It means taking out Iranian military bases and batteries in Syria if they are used to prosecute the war. And it means keeping up the pressure when they push back, which they will, until Putin and his Damascene partners, um, Jesus. You know, guys, I'm sorry. These motorcycles that you fix to make them sound really loud. What is the purpose of that? Why? You know, I, I really, it's astounding to see how many inconsiderate people there are. They don't give a shit about how loud it is and offensive it is. Is it a macho thing? Hey, look at me. I'm on a motorcycle. They can't be quiet. And I know that they do that purposely. I'm, <laughs> but I don't know what the hell is going on in this parking lot because between the cars and the motorcycles, wow, um, there's a Mustang here that they've ramped up and it's, um, according to management, there's nothing that they can do. If it's legal, there's nothing that they can do. They turn their cars or motorcycles on. And now I have a neighbor who just moved in. And there's a kid who just runs back and forth, back and forth, making an awful lot of noise. How is it that that woman is just sitting in there with this kid making an awful lot of noise and nothing? She doesn't realize that she's living in between two other people? Well, that's our world. It's remarkable. I don't get it. It's so easy to be considerate of other people. <laughs> but this reporter, yeah. Uh, it means keeping up the pressure when they push back, which they will, until Putin and his Damascene partner in Water war crimes. They uh, war crimes. We commit war crimes all the time. The UK, the US, all the time. Nobody gets prosecuted for it. And citizens in our respective countries know that our leaders are committing war crimes. Our militaries are committing war crimes, and we just go on. And we claim the other countries are committing war crimes. 
even if one accepts that the U.S. has the right to do such things, which it doesn't, such actions cannot be undertaken without killing the very civilians that Tisdall claims he wants to save the destroying and taking out. He mentions happens through bombing. In Afghanistan, to take one of many possible comparisons, American bombing killed 1,000 to 1 to 1,300 civilians in the first three months alone. And that war will turn 17 in October. 17 years in October. And Tisdall asks, can we no longer distinguish between right and wrong? Clearly not, Tisdall. Um, is it right for us to kill thousands of Syrians and provoke the governments of Syria, Russia, and Iran? No. But we've lost the ability to resolve things through talking. We don't resolve. We don't, it's like, uh, this is the way. This is how Americans rock and roll. You don't resolve. You dominate. And if you don't get your way, you kill. It's the Washington Post also encourages the U.S. to risk World War III and kill Syrians in what would almost certainly be enormous, enormous numbers because President Trump will deal another blow to U.S. global leadership if he does not follow through on his declaration that Syria will pay a big price for its alleged use of chemical weapons. And you know what? This guy is a disgusting, vile, immature, impulsive, uh, what's a good word for not wise at all? He demonstrates behaviors that we used to uh, categorize as wrong, immoral, bad behavior. And it's so sad to me to see so many who are quote unquote awake still supporting this guy. It's sickening. We are just an evil bully. Can't control ourselves. Collectively speaking, it's crime is law. The New York Times contends that, quote, if a Russian veto prevents Security Council action, then Mr. Trump needs to work with our allies through NATO or otherwise. Yeah, international law doesn't matter at all to us. We, we violate it all of the time. So we're supposed to wait for UN authorization. We, we, well, the UN, we all know, wants exactly what's going on. And Tisdall and The Guardian argued that the U.S. needs to break international law so as to uphold international law. These articles rest on the assumption that the United States has a right to control Syria and should kill Syrians and drive them from their homes to assert that right. Yeah, so we're going to have more migrants, those refugees fleeing Syria. Why? Because of us. The UK, the US, Israel. Israel has been bombing Syria. Does Syria not have a right? to defend itself. Well, no. <laughs> not, not when you're the United States. Not when you are a sick, twisted, psychopathic, narcissistic nut who's got to get his way. How could you not be upset about what's going on? The Post editorial says, What's really needed is a concerted strategy for protecting the vital American interests wrapped up in the multi-sided Syrian war. What are our interests there? We've always claimed that our interests 
are humanitarian because we're so good. We're morally superior. We've got to protect people by bombing them. If you know Libya, when we started our bombing campaign, after Gaddafi was murdered, tortured and murdered in the most vile way, we had our Secretary of State laugh, laugh. We came, we saw, he died. <laughs> vile, sick, twisted, repulsive. And people still put this woman on a pedestal. There is something so grossly wrong here in our country. And I will maintain and say until I'm no longer the American, the individual needs to change. They need to look at themselves. They need to ask themselves how they could possibly support and even uh, put on a pedestal people who are, who have demonstrated the worst kind of behaviors, who have created so much suffering, how could they possibly support these people? And how is it possible that we have not run these people out of office? Well, that comes from the majority of the American people still refusing to become responsible adults, deal with what is happening, deal with reality. They prefer to live in this Disneyland delusion, accepting lie after lie. And that behavior is repulsive as well. The Post thinks the only acceptable outcome to the war is the overthrow of the Syrian government. Oh, but we're not about regime change. Oh, my God. An escalation of America's war on Syria will almost certainly mean that Syria's wars will continue. So they argue that an escalation of war in Syria by the U.S. and Israel and the U.K., uh, France, will put a stop to the wars in Syria. The Syrian government and its partners from Iran, Russia, Iraq, Hezbollah, can be expected to fight back against the U.S. efforts to dominate the country. It, this is about stealing the country's resources, this is about bringing Syria to its knees for the Rothschilds. Syria does not have a Rothschild central bank. This is about our sick, unbelievably immature, like disgusting need to dominate everyone. Do you think this is not going to come back? Well, we're being killed off here. Anyway, Americans don't seem to care about that. They don't even care about their own life. They don't care about their own health. You try to talk to somebody about these, how dangerous these microwave frequencies are. And what do they say? Oh, really? You're crazy. Or a few might say, hey, I'll look into it. And they don't. They've got medical problems. They're told that the Wi-Fi that they're sitting in may very well be the cause of their medical problems. And if not the cause, well, they're exacerbating their medical problems. Do they look into it? Nope. No. So we have a suicidal population here. So if they don't care about their own life, do you think that they care about Syrians? No. Of course not. It will be just like Libya. If we go and start bombing and take it over. And Libya, 
uh, almost immediately after our takeover of Libya to get rid of that murderous dictator. To s that was a humanitarian effort on the U.S. part. Yeah, we've got to save those Libyans from Gaddafi. And so we bombed the country. <laughs> We're such a joke. We are such an amazing joke. Well, that country has fallen into utter chaos. And it's now a country that has been taken over by human smuggling rings. Yeah, so the times. To have any chance of success, any international retaliatory action must be part of a coherent diplomatic strategy for stabilizing Syria and putting a political settlement in place. The conflict has allowed Russia, Iran, Turkey, and the Islamic State, now degraded by an American-led coalition to gain a foothold in Syria, notably absent from this list of actors, are the United States and its proxy Israel, both of whom have footholds in Syria. The U.S. controls about one-third of Syria, including most of its oil wealth. Israel, meanwhile, has illegally annexed Syria's Golan Heights and has sought to expand its control of Syrian territory throughout the country's war. We have already gained one-third of Syria. It just, look, yeah, I know a lot of, a lot, a lot of you get very upset because I'm upset and I let you hear it and I can't, uh, look, <laughs> I do believe that any evil that arises, we all have a responsibility if we are mature to do whatever it is that we can to stop it. And it gets very upsetting to see that for my 59 years, evil has just grown and grown and spread. And now it's become just accepted. Accepted in a way that is really twisted because most people, they just rationalize away their role in this evil, rationalize away the responsibility of every adult to destroy evil and bring about good. And they will do it in the craziest of ways. And I'm sick of it. I'm really sick of it. And I will tell you that those who are still comfortable and haven't really experienced the consequences of this kind of evil, then maybe you just don't get it. You can go on living your life and it's absolutely fine. But when you really get it and when you experience it, and then you get how many people are experiencing it, that number increasing on a daily basis. Yeah. I don't understand the point to life at all. <laughs> if this is what it amounts to, on a daily basis, we just watch all of this evil destroy more and more people, more and more life. Just watch it. And not be outraged by it. That to me sounds like 
well, that life has become meaningless. And it's very hard to live life when you see all around you that people just really think it's meaningless. It only means something in terms of their own self-centered life. Am I comfortable? What do I need to do to make myself comfortable? That's the extent of most people. Well, whether we go, you know, it's interesting that Trump sent off those warships immediately. Once again, demonstrating, I don't have to wait for an investigation. I just have to blame someone and then use all the might and power of the U.S. military, the strongest military in the world. Yeah. Because it's not about saving the Syrians. It is about taking over yet another country.